Okay, so before we start these experiments, do any of you have any family members who have been shot or stabbed to death? I just need to know because it will impact the findings of these experiments. <laughs> So as most of you already know, me and Dave Palumbo have been going at it. We're arguing over whether or not Dallas McCarver's death was due to steroids or whether or not steroids are dangerous drugs in general. And I think anyone who has a modicum of common sense can see that Dallas died because he was abusing steroids. He was taking about 10 grams of gear per week, so it's no wonder his heart was three times the size of a normal human his age. And he also had severe coronary atherosclerosis. However, it's Dave's opinion that Dallas's death was caused by a genetic predisposition to heart disease and not abuse of steroids. The main reason he died at, at an early age that he, uh, that he did was because of the fact that there was a genetic component to this disease in his body. And these other risk factors just set it off. How much they set it off, it's impossible to quantify. Even Wikipedia can't tell us that because we just don't know. This is why Dave made it on the worst of the fitness industry list. It's not just because he's wrong, but it's because he's being dishonest. I'm convinced Dave knows enough about these drugs to realize that they are harmful, they can and do kill people, even young men, including Dallas McCarver. And if I'm not mistaken, Dave was taking steroids for bodybuilding purposes for 10 years. On top of that, he's been taking TRT for an additional 10 years. And apparently he even went to medical school. He's coached tons of clients. Uh, so Dave is deliberately hiding things, lying by omission, or saying false or misleading information to give his viewers the wrong impression that steroids are safe drugs and they haven't caused the death of young men, including Dallas. The reason I said this, first of all, we know that blockages in the coronary arteries happen in, in most normal people because of what? Smoking, drinking alcohol, not exercising, eating high sugar foods, being overweight, obese, type two diabetes. This is why most people get blockages in their coronary arteries. It sounds like you know as little about heart disease as you do about hiding male pattern baldness. We all know that you're just using black hair dye. Do you think the baldness might have something to do with steroids or do you have a family history of hideousness? So the main risk factor for atherosclerosis is LDL cholesterol. It is the only risk factor necessary for plaques to form. If you can keep your LDL cholesterol below 70 milligrams per deciliter and your total cholesterol below 140 milligrams per deciliter, there's no evidence that any other risk factors, including smoking, inactivity, or diabetes could cause plaques to form. So these numbers are very important. If any aspect of your diet or lifestyle causes your LDL to rise above 70 and your total cholesterol to rise above 140, you will trigger the progression of atherosclerosis. It's funny how you left out the importance of cholesterol and heart disease risk when steroids, along with aromatase inhibitors, which are often taken in combination with these drugs, are known to raise LDL bad cholesterol and reduce HDL good cholesterol. Trenbolone is known in particular to be bad for this side effect. And the toxicology report uh, showed that Dallas was taking Trenbolone, of course, in combination with other steroids. And he was taking absolutely massive, uh, massive doses, which would have had a profound effect on his cholesterol score. So weird, Dallas most likely died from ischemic heart disease, the main cause of which is elevated cholesterol in the blood. Dallas was taking massive doses of drugs that elevate serum cholesterol, and you left out the fact that heart disease is caused by elevated cholesterol levels. It's almost as if you're intentionally trying to sound like an absolute retard to try to hide a very obvious fact. Okay, now subject A, could you please try to stab subject B to death? Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I'm a hemophiliac. I won't be able to stop bleeding. Oh, okay, well, I'll be sure to make a note of that. Now, uh, please proceed. No, 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 please don't. Oh! Oh, 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 oh. 
Wow, fascinating. Subject B did not die from getting repeatedly stabbed, but hemophilia, which caused uncontrollable bleeding, caused him to die, and therefore, being stabbed is perfectly safe and has no health risks. So steroids, especially certain compounds like trenbolone, are well known to elevate LDL bad cholesterol and reduce HDL good cholesterol. And of course, the higher one's LDL cholesterol score, the faster atherosclerosis progresses. Because of this, it's well known that steroids do increase the risk of atherosclerosis and coronary artery disease. According to the National Athletic Trainers Association position statement on anabolic androgenic steroids, the best evidence indicates that non-therapeutic use of steroid-related conditions include cardiomyopathy and the potential for atherosclerotic vascular disease caused by detrimental lipid changes, which may adversely affect one's risk of coronary artery disease. Also, a very recent study published in 2017 found that steroid users had higher coronary artery plaque volume than non-steroid users, and lifetime steroid dosages were strongly associated with coronary atherosclerotic burden. So the higher the dose of steroids you're taking and the longer you've been taking them, the more plaque will build up in your arteries. Is this painting a clear enough picture for you, Dave? Dallas had severe coronary atherosclerosis, the main cause of which is elevated LDL cholesterol. Steroids can elevate LDL cholesterol and cause other detrimental lipid changes. And the scientific consensus is that steroids increase your risk of developing coronary artery disease because of their detrimental effects on serum cholesterol. And Dallas was taking absurd amounts of these drugs, which would have created an extremely atherogenic lipid profile. Jay, I wonder what could have caused his death. It couldn't have been the 10 fucking grams of gear he was taking per week. <laughs> Now, I'm sure Dave and maybe many of you still might have this idea that heart disease is extremely rare in young men. Uh, the only people who develop heart disease in their 20s must have had some kind of genetic predisposition, even if they were abusing steroids. Well, almost everyone has the early stages of atherosclerosis by the time they reach their 20s. Back in the 1950s, a series of 300 autopsies were conducted on U.S. soldiers who were killed in action in Korea, and the mean age of these men was 22. It was found that 77% of these men had some gross evidence of coronary arteriosclerosis, thickening and hardening of the artery walls. And keep in mind, these were young men in the military who were physically fit and overall healthy, yet almost all of them had the early stages of coronary heart disease. Another recent study published in 2006 had similar findings where cardiovascular risk factors, which included elevated serum cholesterol, were associated with earlier onset and worsening of atherosclerotic lesions and subjects were persons 15 through 34 years of age, and this study involved nearly 3,000 autopsies. This is why heart disease is the leading killer worldwide. Almost everyone is susceptible to it because it's so easy to drive your cholesterol levels high enough to cause the progression of atherosclerosis. Now, just imagine if a young man in his late teens, early 20s, started taking extremely high doses of steroids, which raises LDL cholesterol even further and also triggers other inflammatory processes. Uh, we also know that the more steroids you take over a period of time, the faster atherosclerosis progresses. Do you really think it's beyond the realm of possibility that a young man like Dallas could develop severe coronary atherosclerosis from taking 10 grams of gear per week, which is over 30 times what could be considered a therapeutic dose? What happened to Dallas shouldn't be considered a rarity. Uh, normal young kids his age already have the early stages of atherosclerosis, and he just accelerated the process by taking massive amounts of steroids. If more kids in their 20s were taking as much gear as Dallas, we would see a hell of a lot more cases of kids dying in their 20s of heart disease. Okay, so why don't you two children play around with these loaded handguns? Oh, oh fucking sweet. sweet! Oh shit! Hmm, interesting.
Interesting. In this case report, a child playing with a loaded handgun killed another child, but further research is required to confirm whether or not loaded handguns are dangerous for children. And it takes years and years and years to get to that point, usually. Some people will die in their early 30s, you know, once again, usually the early deaths from coronary artery disease, and not because they're super slobs, because you could see some of the fattest people in this country and they don't have blockages. There's a genetic component to heart disease that we cannot overlook. And in Dallas McCarver's case, even though being 340 pounds, taking anabolic steroids, probably having high blood pressure, were certainly contributory factors that sped up the process a little bit, the main reason he died at, at an early age that he, uh, that he did was because of the fact that there was a genetic component to this disease in his body. And these other risk factors just set it off. How much they set it off, it's impossible to quantify. Even Wikipedia can't tell us that because we just don't know. All right, again, this is a retarded, scientifically inaccurate statement. Dave is trying to suggest that when young people like Dallas McCarver die of heart disease at such a young age, uh, that is somehow proof that genetic rather than lifestyle factors cause their death? Well, when you introduce a risk factor into a population, you're going to get differences in individual outcomes. That doesn't mean that particular risk factor wasn't the cause of death in younger people. For example, if we take a look at cigarette smoking, according to the Center for Disease Control, overall mortality among both male and female smokers in the United States is about three times higher than that among similar people who never smoked. So, in other words, if you are a smoker, you are three times more likely to die uh, than compared to a peer of a similar age and lifestyle. And according to the Illinois Department of Public Health, 90% of all smokers start before the age of 18. The average for a new smoker is 13. So even teenagers are at an increased risk of death from smoking, and of course the risk increases the more years you smoke. Now, most people get lung cancer from smoking between 60 to 75 years of age, but there are people unfortunate enough to develop lung cancer in their 20s. So if you were to see someone who had been smoking cigarettes since they were a teenager and they ended up getting lung cancer by the age of 26, would you blame their lung cancer on cigarettes or would you blame their cancer on their genetic predisposition to lung cancer? Do you see how Dave is creating a double standard here? Smoking is a risk factor for lung cancer, and when cigarettes, that risk factor, is introduced into a population, there are going to be differences in individual outcomes. Some people might get lung cancer in their 60s or 70s. Some people might never get any cancer of any kind despite smoking since childhood. And some people might be unfortunate enough to get cancer in their 20s. That doesn't mean smoking wasn't the cause of cancer in young people and their genetic predisposition is to blame. It just means there are going to be differences in individual outcomes when populations are exposed to certain risk factors like smoking. And the same thing goes for Dallas McCarver. Uh, steroids are a risk factor for heart disease and you're going to see differences in individual outcomes. Some people might get heart disease at 26 years old. Some people might die of heart disease in their 40s from, ab from abusing steroids. And some people might live up until old age. You don't just get to say, oh, Dallas was 26, so there's no way steroids killed him. It must have been a genetic thing. Okay, so for this test, I want you two to both stand still while I blindly shoot this gun towards you. Wow, that's amazing! Getting shot at does not increase risk of death. However, having a genetic predisposition for getting shot in the head does cause death. Wow, what a shame. He was only 26 years old, but 
It's just incredible the difference genetics make. Blaming bad genetics for someone's death when there were modifiable risk factors present like cigarette smoking or steroids in Dallas's case is downright retarded. Just because you're going to get differences in individual outcomes doesn't mean you just get to arbitrarily decide when someone died because of bad genetics and when someone died because of steroids. You wouldn't do that with any other drugs like cigarettes, cocaine, or alcohol. So why are you doing that with steroids? You are creating a ridiculous double standard to protect your own personal bias. You want steroids to be safe, but that simply isn't the case. And the more steroids you take over a longer period of time, the greater your risk of chronic disease and death. But there's a lot of guys out of there uh, in the bodybuilding world who weigh over 300 pounds, who take anabolic steroids, and unfortunately, probably guys who take just as much as he did, unfortunately, and they're not dropping dead of, of heart attacks due to blockages in their coronary arteries because they don't have a genetic predisposition. There's plenty of people who have been smoking cigarettes since they were teenagers, and after many decades, they still don't have lung cancer, and that's because they don't have a genetic predisposition. Genetic predispositions are what cause lung cancer from smoking, not cigarettes. Again, you're deploying this ridiculous double standard. The fact is, steroids are a risk factor for heart disease that is well recognized in the scientific community. Just because there are differences in individual outcomes, that doesn't mean steroids don't increase your risk of death from heart disease, and that doesn't mean steroids didn't cause Dallas's death. And genetic predisposition can be seen as a relative term. These people who you're talking about who are taking 10 plus grams of gear per week and somehow avoid heart disease, they might have exceptionally good genetics that protect them against heart disease and Dallas might be more towards the norm. Again, I can find people who smoke cigarettes and they've lived over 100 years old. Does that mean I get to say, well, everyone else just has bad genetics. Cigarettes don't cause early death because I can find people who are living over 100 and they smoke. You're just cherry picking personal anecdotes and then ignoring all the evidence that steroids do in fact increase risk of heart disease. Your only argument thus far has been, I know plenty of guys who take tons of steroids and they're not dead yet. Okay, now subject A and B, I want you both to snort 10 lines of pure cocaine. Aw, oh, sweet. I've always wanted to snort cocaine with Ozzy Osbourne. <sighs> <sighs> Oh, what the fuck is that guy's fucking problem? It's only ten fucking lines of the stuff. I used to do ten fucking lines for breakfast every fucking morning. My god, that's incredible. I never would have believed this if I didn't see it for myself. Cocaine is a harmless drug. However, Subject A's bad genetics caused him to die of cocaine overdose. However, Ozzy Osbourne's good genetics show that cocaine is harmless and does not increase risk of death. On top of that, you're trying to bullshit everyone into thinking Dallas's heart problems are rare, especially for someone his age. Well, Dallas had severe coronary atherosclerosis and cardiomegaly. His heart was about three times the size of a normal human of his age and he was taking Trenbolone. Trenbolone is well known to elevate LDL cholesterol and cause left ventricular hypertrophy, which are risk factors for heart attack and arrhythmias, which can cause cardiac arrest and death, which is what Dallas died of. Well, you can actually find case reports of young men taking Trenbolone and suffering from heart attacks, narrowing of their coronary arteries, and enlargement of the heart. This case report followed a 23-year-old male who suffered a heart attack following chronic Trenbolone consumption, and this patient did not have a medical history of heart disease and related risk factors. The patient's angiography showed stenosis, or narrowing of the left anterior descending and left circumflex coronary arteries, which is similar to what Dallas had. 
but here, fortunately, they were able to open up his coronary artery using a stent. So this is a 23-year-old male, three years younger than Dallas, and keep in mind, he probably wasn't taking anywhere near as much gear as Dallas was, and he didn't have any past history of heart disease or related risk factors. But using Trenbolone for just one year was enough to cause significant narrowing of his coronary arteries, which resulted in a heart attack, and that's probably what happened to Dallas. So steroids can cause significant vascular dysfunction, even in young men who have only been using for a relatively short period of time. And again, this is especially true of Trenbolone. Now, Trenbolone was never intended for human use, so there isn't too much data on the effects of Trenbolone in humans. However, the next closest compound is Nandrolone, and Nandrolone has been found to be 11 times more harmful to endothelial cells, the cells which line your arteries compared to testosterone. There are also other real-world studies that confirm steroids do in fact cause endothelial cell damage and raise markers of inflammation. Steroid use is strongly associated with endothelial cell damage and impaired vasoreactivity. This is actually a similar mechanism in which cigarette smoking accelerates atherosclerosis. Again, all of this data adds up and paints a very clear picture. Not only do steroids accelerate atherosclerosis by altering your lipid profile, but they also cause direct damage to your artery walls. And the compounds Dallas was taking, like Trenbolone, are especially harmful. And sure enough, you can find case reports of young men taking Trenbolone and ending up with narrowed coronary arteries and heart attacks. Now, cardiovascular risk factors don't just affect your heart, it affects your entire vascular system, including your brain, and when you have elevated LDL cholesterol and increased platelet aggregation, this can also impede blood flow to your brain, which can result in a stroke. This case report followed a previously healthy 25-year-old man who suffered an ischemic stroke following steroid use, and he was taking Trenbolone and testosterone. Laboratory tests showed elevated homocysteine, which is pro-inflammatory and can accelerate atherosclerosis. He did have accelerated platelet aggregation, which is a risk factor for heart attack and stroke, and he had elevated LDL and low HDL, all of these risk factors work to accelerate atherosclerosis, impede blood flow, and increase risk of heart attack and stroke. I know this isn't a heart attack, but I thought I'd share this case report because, again, this shows that steroids can cause extensive vascular damage in young men who are healthy before taking steroids. And as before, I think we can assume that this man was taking far less gear than Dallas was taking. So if a comparatively small amount of steroids can cause heart attacks and strokes in men who are even younger than Dallas, I think it's no wonder that Dallas died of heart disease when he was taking upwards of twice the amount of gear these guys were taking. So here's another case report which followed a 25-year-old man who suffered a heart attack. He had no cardiovascular risk factors or history of other relevant diseases, but he was taking a cocktail of steroids, including Trenbolone, angiography indicated intraluminal thrombus, aka a blood clot in the proximal third of the right coronary artery, which was inhibiting blood flow and causing intense pain. So not only does steroid use directly damage your arteries and alter your lipid profile, promoting the accumulation of plaque, but they also increase platelet aggregation, which increases the risk of developing a blood clot, which could lead to blockages in your coronary arteries and kill you, which is likely what killed Dallas. And again, this is a 25-year-old man with no past history of heart disease or related risk factors, and he suffered a heart attack from steroid use. And in this case, we know the exact dosages he was taking. He was taking five and a half grams of gear per week pretty much half of what Dallas was taking, and he still suffered a heart attack. Again, Dave wants you to think that heart attacks caused by steroid use in young men are extremely rare, and it only happens to people with a genetic predisposition like Dallas. Well, no. Young men who have no history of heart disease can get narrowing of their coronary arteries and suffer heart attacks from steroid use, and that's with dosages much lower than what Dallas was taking. What's also interesting in this case report was that they found the patient had mild left ventricular hypertrophy. Left ventricular hypertrophy is a very common side effect of steroid use. This may have caused Dallas's death, 
Left ventricular hypertrophy increases the risk of arrhythmias, which can lead to cardiac arrest and death. And Dallas's heart was about three times the size of a normal human of his age. Uh, he was on the extreme end of the spectrum, but steroid use in much lower quantities can cause left ventricular hypertrophy. Here's another case report of a 29-year-old fitness instructor who suffered from left ventricular hypertrophy. Over the last six years, he had regularly taken high doses of anabolic steroids, including trenbolone, and he was diagnosed with steroid-induced cardiomyopathy, and this is a huge risk factor for arrhythmias and heart failure. Unfortunately, this case report doesn't share the exact dosages he was taking, but I think we can say with a very high degree of certainty, he wasn't taking anywhere near as much gear as Dallas was taking, yet he was well on his way to heart failure at only 29 years of age. Uh, fortunately, this guy did stop taking steroids and his heart function returned to normal. However, he did still have mild concentric hypertrophy. Anabolic steroid use does appear to cause long-term or even permanent left ventricular hypertrophy, and long-term steroid use is associated with left ventricular dysfunction, increasing the risk of heart failure. So steroids do often cause hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, even in young men, and this is the most common cause of death in athletes. Here's a case report from Australia where an 18 and 24 year old died from fatal cardiac arrest, and upon autopsy, the 18 year old had features of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and they both tested positive for the steroid oxymesterone. Here's another case report where a 21 year old previously healthy weightlifter collapsed during a bench press workout. He had been taking nandrolone, and autopsy found he had an enlarged heart. So again, he probably died from hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. This is also what Dallas had, and one of the symptoms of cardiomyopathy is fainting. And remember, Dallas fainted on the Arnold stage before he died. Uh, Dallas did have severe coronary atherosclerosis, but he could have just as easily died from hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So this isn't as uncommon as you might think, even in younger people. There are men in their 20s who are even younger than Dallas who are taking these drugs in lower doses, yet they're still suffering from narrowing of the coronary arteries, heart attacks, strokes, and cardiomyopathy. And in some of the case reports I just shared, cessation of steroid use led to reversal of these symptoms. I don't see how Dave could claim that Dallas's bad genetics are to blame for his heart problems and his cause of death, when it's quite clear that steroid use can cause significant damage to the cardiovascular system, even in young men, and cessation of steroid use can reverse symptoms. Okay, so subject C, I see that you have been taking crystal meth for quite some time and you have increased blood pressure, heart rate, and irregular heartbeats. Now, I want you to please stop taking crystal meth to see if we'll see reversal of these symptoms. Nigga, why the fuck would I stop taking crystal meth? Meth has turned me into a straight up baller. I don't care about this heart attack bullshit. I'm only interested in being gangster as fuck. So you're just full of shit, Dave. Your only argument against the fact that Dallas McCarver died from steroid abuse is, well, I know guys who take plenty of steroids and they're not dead yet. Wow, you're such an expert. That 20 plus years of experience with steroids and coaching how many people and going to medical school has really paid off. Dave has also said that the debate is still on. I just recently sent him an email, so hopefully he responds and we can discuss all of this live. Uh, but if he's still interested in having this debate, it's going to be an absolute train wreck. The scientific consensus is quite clear. Steroids do accelerate the progression of atherosclerosis and increase the risk of heart attack and stroke. Uh, they also do often cause enlargement of the heart. Denying that at this point is just intellectually dishonest. But if you like this video, maybe consider supporting me on Patreon. I have some funding perks you may find interesting. Also, if you want some vegan gains apparel like this, you should uh, check out the store. You might find something you like. And as always, keep making those vegan and natural gains. Beef. What a relief. When will this poisonous product cease? This is another public service announcement. You can believe it or you can doubt it. Let us begin now with the cow. The way it gets to your plate and how.